Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back and thrilled that you're continuing on your journey towards success. Remember that we are here to support you every single step of the way. So reach out to us at drsellerseducate.com and you will see a list of many resources to help you on your journey. Or you can email us if you have questions. That's going to be info at drsellerseducate.com. For this episode, we will be focusing on our workbook part four, which highlights key concepts associated with the curriculum, which tends to be a large gap area for many. Um, this is also competency for in the CNE um, detailed test blueprint, and also for the CNE CL and CNE novice educators out there, if you're on the journey to achieve that certification, this is still very important content that you want to make sure you review before you sit down for the exam. In looking at competency four, you want to, and that's for the CNE, um, but for others of you that are um, that may be reviewing concepts to get ready for other exams, um, what you want to do is first just take a look at the content that's listed in the detailed test blueprint. All right, so taking a look at our workbook now, you see here that this is actually an example of our learning guide. So this is a free resource that's available on our website that you can review to help you better understand some of those key concepts associated with the specific competency that you'll need to make sure you spend some time focusing on to close your knowledge gaps. When we look at curriculum design, it's important to think about our outcomes, right? We want to be able to translate and transfer that knowledge to our students. And we wanna build content throughout our curriculum that's gonna help students scaffold their learning. And ultimately, we wanna be able to validate that learning has occurred by using our evidence-based evaluation strategies, right? That is our goal. Um, so there are a couple of elements here that we wanna highlight. Um, first, looking at some of those key concepts, we must be good partners and colleagues and looking at our curriculum design. We wanna ensure there is alignment, not only with our community and university, but also with the student's clinical experiences. Okay, so that's the other important concept that you need to consider. When we talk about our curriculum and our student outcomes, it's important that we get feedback from our stakeholders. And who are they? You guessed it, it's going to be our clinical partners in a healthcare setting. It's going to be our students, especially our alumni. Did they feel ready for practice when they graduated? When we talk about that transition from theory to practice, we want to incorporate as many experiences as we can to help students bridge that transit, bridge in that transition, right? So what does that look like? Well, in the classroom setting, we want to introduce unfolding case studies. We want to create as much as we can those clinical experiences, even in the classroom, so students can engage in that dialogue with us as they prepare for what their practice, what their practices will be in the clinical setting when they are providing um, that safe patient care that we know that they can. When we talk about addressing trends and issues, the pandemic is a perfect example. We all had to do what we call pivot, right? That was a buzzword that was used by many. So we wanna ensure that we are making adjustments to our curriculum, even if that means pulling in some um, current literature articles that is going to allow us to engage in discussions with our students about those clinical practices or those specific um, trends and issues, trends and changes in perhaps the nursing um, setting that we may want to educate our students about. And then our last focus is uh, our last focus for this learning guide is going to be those curriculum delivery methods. These are uh, very common ones that you see listed in Billings and Halstead that you want to make sure you better understand. Um, and then there's a practice question at the end. So if we take a look now and go back just one step, and looking at the actual workbook, this is part four where we're focusing on the curriculum design de and development, that program evaluation, um, as well as clinical alignment. When you think about clinical alignment, you may wonder, especially if you're taking the CNE or the CNE novice, well, this is you know not a clinical exam, so why would I expect to see questions on the CNE? Well, indeed you will. Um, and the exam blueprint doesn't tell us exactly how many questions will be related to cl clinical alignment, but we do know that with the curriculum, we wanna ensure that we are also 
considering those clinical learning objectives, right? What can we expect our students to learn in the clinical setting and how is it aligned with the curriculum and those learning objectives in the various courses? And so when you think about curriculum, we must think about clinical alignment because that's going to help us do a better job in supporting our nursing students and their journey towards bridging that theory to practice. All right, so these are the highlights for this episode. If you haven't had a chance, go ahead and click subscribe. That way you'll be notified every single time there's a new episode. As a reminder, you can always reach out to us via email, info at drsellerseducate.com. And we are excited to share with you that we will be launching um, a brand new exam analysis workshop because we know that's a large gap area too. It tends to be curriculum and evaluation, so competencies three and four that many nurse educators struggle with. And we wanna do everything we can to support you on your journey. And we believe that this exam analysis um, time focusing on the, that specific competency in that specific area will better prepare you to be successful on the exam. All right, so that's it for now. Until next time, we uh, look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thanks everyone.